Hi, and welcome back to Stock Talk. So I want to start out by giving you a little bit more background on me. Um, I have provided stock research and consulting for the past 30 years. As many of you have watched the show would probably already know, but I wanted to also mention that I have spent a significant amount of time trading interday in a couple of different ways and uh, for different reasons. And so I want to explain that a little bit and give you a, a deeper understanding as to why I did that. Um, so let me, uh, let's go into the agenda today. So again, the goal today is really to give you a little bit more of like a clearer understanding of multiple time frame analysis and um, the ways that I can, that you can go about doing that in terms of improving uh, how quickly you learn, improve your learning curve. And I think that comes from understanding the fractal nature of the markets. So we're going to go through that in this brief lesson, and then we're going to get into the stock uh, request that came through. Before I do that, I just want to let you know my services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. The service is really twofold. Uh, first, I go through three to 4,000 stocks on a regular basis and identify the most attractive patterns based on my method. And then second, I spend a decent amount of time educating and providing tools that can make you a better investor. So that's kind of the goal of the service. Um, I'm also providing a discount for people who watch the show. If you go to the uh, individual package monthly and plug in the uh, coupon code stock talk you can get the first two months for fifty dollars so let's get into this discussion and i want to make sure you have uh, you know just a clear understanding of why i would spend so much time trading in day and one of the reasons is um, I, I learned this from someone, actually, I spent a lot of time studying GAN over the years, and GAN <laughs> has spent a pretty decent portion of his time trading on an interday basis. By the time he was done, he was talking about catching long trending moves and not necessarily a lot doing a lot of interday trading. But I believe the reason why he started out doing these short-term trades is because he knew that it would inc improve his learning curve. And that's really what I did. I, I wanted to do a boatload of trades. I, I wanted to get as many trades in as I could. And a lot of them were done on a simulator. They weren't even done with real money. I don't necessarily recommend that 100%. I think if you want to learn about yourself, you do need to do it with real money. But you want to start with really small amounts. And when I was trading the S&P E-mini, I was really just doing it with one contract. And I did probably 5,000 trades in the E-mini over the course of about a year or two years, uh, you know, just spending a little bit of time each day putting, putting myself out there and trying to identify and test some of the things that I was looking at. And one of the things that I found the most powerful about this, and it made me an unbelievable, it really improved my ability to analyze charts, is the, the fact that what was happening on an interday basis, on a really micro time frame, like a one or a two minute chart, would happen also and look the same as it would on a weekly chart, a daily chart, or even a monthly chart in some cases. And so I found this to be so powerful because I knew that if I spent time where you could do, I mean, you could do 10 times the amount of trades if you're trading off a interday time frame than you could off the longer term time frames. And so I use this to my advantage. And anytime I had a new indicator that I wanted to test, I always put it in on these, mi on these micro time frames and tested it out, spent time really studying it and seeing if it could withhold the, the uh, test of time by doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trades. And uh, so anyway, I wanted to give this background because I think it's a, it's a really, uh, it's a pretty cool thing. And the other thing that I think is powerful about doing this is if you think about someone like Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning and you look at how good they were at being a quarterback or are still with Brady and you go and you ask the people what they do or what they did to make them better than everyone else, they studied a boatload of film. 
they did a bunch of st- film study, and they still do. And I, I mean, if you watch uh, Peyton Manning talk about Monday Night Football, he does some um, uh, commentating on that. You can see that he's still doing study of film. And so the point I'm trying to make there is that the game slows down. The more film you look at or the more trading you do, the market will slow down for you, and you'll start to see these things in real time. That's the whole goal. You want to be able to see it, and you want to see it quickly. So uh, I want to just make sure I covered that first. So secondly, I've got two charts up. I've got Microsoft. So there's four charts up, but on the, on the left side, I've got Microsoft. Um, I've got a two-minute chart on the, on the top and a 10-minute chart at the bottom. And on the right, I've got Advanced Micro, and I've got a daily on the top and a weekly on the bottom. And so I want to start with the bottom chart on the left on Microsoft, and we see what's happened here. Notice how... We have this nice move to the upside, and then we get a pullback. And we got a strong new high in MACD, and we get a pullback. And look at how strong the ADX is. Okay, so we're kind of coming out of this consolidation phase, and then we move to the upside. Now, notice how we were actually kind of had sideways moving averages, and then we take off, and then these things, now the 18 is above the 40, and both lines are rising as we're pulling back. So that's right where this dotted line is. Now, look at this weekly uh, AMD. So we get this move to the upside and then a move back. And we had this sort of sideways consolidation prior to that. We have a strong MACD condition in place, hitting new highs with price. And we have a very strong ADX reading. And it, in both of these situations, during the pullback, the ADX stayed well above 25, this 25 line going across in both cases. So I can look at this and I could literally take the uh, take the 10 minute off here, just cross that off and say, okay, I've got this chart and it's pulling back and I've got this ADX pattern. And this literally could be a weekly chart. It could be a monthly chart. It really doesn't matter. It's amazing um, how often I'll see this if I'm I'm scouring through different charts and I always see the hourly along with the monthly. And there are a lot of times where the charts will look, some patterns will be developing in the exact same way. So we want to be able to be able to do this. And I, I want you to also understand we've got this pullback. So this is the higher time frame. Down here is the higher time frame in both cases. Now let's look at the lower time frame. Notice how we got this opposing trend where the 18 crossed down below the 40. And that's where I have this dotted line. Look at how the MACD was just a little bit of overrun of the zero line, right? But we have low ADX and red really couldn't get anything seriously going. Now we look here, we have the same thing where the 18 crosses down below the 40. We get a little bit of overrun, overrun on the MACD, but still pretty bullish around the zero line. Same thing, low ADX pattern. So I can look at these and, and we can even go down to the point of saying, now let me clear all this off and so you can see, this pattern went into the zone between the 18 and the 40. We rallied up and then came down and tested like that. Look at what this did. This went into the zone and then came down and tested just like that. I mean, these patterns are essentially identical. Uh, I mean, there's, there's very little difference in them. And one is taking place on a two-minute chart and the other one's on a daily chart. It's a pretty significant difference in terms of time frames. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to get everyone to be an interday trader. But if you have a little spare time to study some film, go back and look at some interday or potentially doing it during the course of the day if you have downtime, uh, that might not be a bad strategy. Just don't risk a whole lot. Uh, it, when you're doing it, but I think your learning curve for trading the bigger time frames will go way, way up. And, and so I want you to understand the fractal nature of the market, which is we can start with a monthly chart and go down about, I, I use a one to five ratio. So weekly works pretty well with a monthly, um, about five weeks in a month typically. Uh, if you go down to a daily chart, there's about five, there's five days in a week, right? And then we go to an hourly and there's about six hours in a day. And then we keep working our way down and you can keep doing that. And you'll see these patterns will continue to play out in the same way. As long as you keep the ratios pretty close to one to five, one to six, you could even go to one to seven, but really one to five, one to six, I think are the best. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get into some stock analysis uh, and look at your request. One last thing on the multiple time frames and the fractal 
nature of the markets is that I would recommend looking at the looking at it in terms of trying to find two time frames together. And this is kind of the why I don't have the hourly here, but typically I would. And I want to work two time frames together. And I like this is why I like having this set up this way with the monthly next to the weekly and the weekly next to the daily and the daily next to the hourly. And I, I, I like to look at two time frames, consecutive time frames with that one to five, one to six ratio uh, side by side. And uh, I think if you can do that, I think your timing should improve. One time frame is to help you uh, identify the pattern and, uh, that you want to buy. And the other time frame is to help with the timing. So, uh, okay, let's get into the analysis. Uh, we've got Nike here, and um, the trend here is good. I mean, we keep making higher highs and higher lows, and the monthly chart is being confirmed by the ADX uh, on, a, on a monthly basis. Every time we make a new high, we're, we're doing pretty well here in terms of the ADX, and MACD is also confirming. So that, that's a positive. Um, one of the things that the way this played out, we got the big gap up here, uh, in June, I think it was, gapped up, and then we had some follow-through, and then we kind of came down pretty hard, but found support here, and now we've kind of taken off, so we've created this little kind of sort of a V pattern, and it's a little bit more uh, blatant when you look at the daily. You can see it looked like more like a V, and typically when I see this, essentially we just tried to break out after rallying up from 145 all the way to 175. So it's it's overbought at the breakout point. And this is typically what we see. Um, you get the breakout like that, and then you don't get a lot of follow through. And this might spend a little time consolidating in here. It might even back down. Uh, the 18 week could be a pretty good barometer somewhere in there is acting as support. Uh, but, you know, generally speaking, the overall trend is good. I just don't think this is timely uh, just based on the fact that we made that big run. It should cool off a little bit over the course of, say, you know, the next two to four weeks. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Should have pretty good support in the low 160s, though. Uh, CCJ. So this is a stronger. This is a, also a strong pattern with the good ADX confirming along with MACD on the monthly chart. But this is a little bit more extended. I mean, if we look at how far away this is from its the current price at 27, the 18 month is down around 16. I mean, that's a pretty good distance away. And then even if we look at this is at 21 on the weekly chart, and we're up at 27, that's that's also a pretty good distance away. So both the monthly and the week. Weekly, I would consider to be overbought right now. Um, now, the trend is good, so it's not necessarily something that I would consider to be a sell or anything like that, but um, it would prevent me from wanting to add to this at this point. The other thing that I would mention is that we, we tried to break out here. So we so you have this peak here, and we tried to break out, but we didn't have much follow through, and then we got a pretty deep pullback. Now we broke out again here, taking out this peak with this one. It only, it only survived one day, and then we started to work back down again. So there's not much follow-through on these breakouts. It's sort of showing the momentum condition where MACD isn't confirming and we're getting a slowdown in ADX. So I wouldn't be surprised if we try and check back to 24 or something like that in the near term. I mean, again, these aren't big negatives. They're just, if I'm looking to be a buyer in this, I, I, I would not be all that excited right now. I'd probably be waiting for a little bit better price somewhere in the mid 20s, I think. A10, A-T-E-N. Uh, so one of the things I, I like to look at is um, when we get stretched away from a moving average. So you notice how this 18 month is here and we had this move up, 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 pause bar, and then big up. This is the biggest bar. In fact, this is the biggest bar other than this big red bar, which also ended the decline. So just keep this in mind. You get a move to the downside and then you get a monster bar like this. That's usually a sign of exhaustion to the downside. Now we're getting the opposite. We make a move to the upside, pretty strong move, and then we get this huge green bar and we're stretched away from the 18. That's a sign of exhaustion to the upside. So I think this is more of a sign that this is ready to take a pause rather than this is a lot of strength. I almost view this more like an exhaustion pattern. Um, now, we go and look at the momentum conditions. The momentum conditions are very good. This is in good shape. 
But in the near term, I, based on this pattern, how big a bar this was, I'd be inclined to think that we're going to spend some time and let these moving averages catch up. Um, I don't think we need to be in a huge hurry to be a buyer in this. Um, you know, if if you want to take advantage of this big move to the upside and take some profits, it's not a bad idea. Uh, but the momentum conditions are telling you that over time, this is going to work higher. So uh, let's look at ITRI. So here's a little bit of a different pattern. Notice how so we have this sort of similar situation where we make a move to the upside and then we get a monster green bar that's pretty stretched away from the AT. Not as, not as much as the ATEN, but you are a pretty good distance away. And then we actually get the reversal. So this is a two bar reversal where we have a green bar followed by a red bar. These two bars slap together and we have a big reversal pattern. And we even went up and tested the 100 area after that. Uh, so it's almost like the midpoint of that we went and tested. So that's a pretty negative pattern, I think. Uh, and I think this is going to have a very difficult time uh, probably getting up and going now that we've got the 18 and the 40 week declining. We've got a serious breakdown in the MACD and the ADX on the weekly is actually to the downside. It's more negative. The ADX is strong, but it's based on the selling. So we're at a pretty key level here. This is a pretty I would say 75 area is, is pretty important. We haven't officially broken it. We haven't gotten disconnected, but uh, there's a lot of weakness here. So no rush to be a buyer. Uh, I really think we need to see this stabilize. Jacobs Engineering, this is a quality pattern uh, that uh, you know made a strong move. And in fact, I think I discussed this not that long ago, but we had a pause move sideways and we had strong ADX throughout. So when you see strong ADX, you don't necessarily look for a pullback all the way to the 18 month. And then we have this move to this uh, on a sideways basis gets this uh, to cross over, MACD to cross over with low ADX, and now we're starting to move to the upside. The next entry really would be on some kind of a little pullback. Um, I think there's a lot of support at 140. I don't know that we're going to pull back that far, but that would be, I'd be looking for the next pullback towards the 18 as sort of the next buying chance. Um, HEI, now this one is interesting. So um, let's look at the weekly. Uh, you made this big move to the upside and then market uh, got hit and uh, stock got hit along with it. We recovered and have moved back up into this area. Now we're up against the same high we've been having problems uh, with, but the MACD held the zero line. So we had a strong enough move to get the MACD to correct and still hold the zero line. And we're starting to turn back to the upside. I just want to see a little bit more strength out of MACD, maybe get green DI to cross and hold like that. Um, I wouldn't buy the breakout again because it started from down here. If we can pause or form some kind of a cup or something like that and then break out, I think this would be more attractive. Uh, but overall, there's a lot of improvement here. I just don't know that it's timely right now. Uh, BABA. So BABA's actually uh, reversed to the downside after this hit in this 300 level and been hit pretty hard. If you notice at the peak on the monthly, we had a nice move to the upside. Look at how ADX could barely, just barely got to 25. Okay, so you make a strong move to the upside and you just can't get ADX going. That's sort of a sign of uh, that, you know, it's just not strong enough to trend. Then we get the reversal and now we've kind of gone the other way. But look at where we are now. We're coming back down to, I think, a pretty key area. Uh, this 150 area should be pretty good support. Now, I wouldn't buy this because when I look at that, I'd say, okay, I've got support, but I don't like the trend. Look at the trend on the weekly chart. We've got a, a bearish MACD that's getting actually a little overdone, but look at how strong the ADX is based on the selling, based on the red DI. So this is going to have to stabilize and turn the corner. I think this is going to take a little while. I think the minimum criteria, you got to wait for this to break the downtrend line. And then preferably, I'd like to see break of the trend line and a test and then a turn back to the upside uh, before I'd be interested. So Visa. Um, so sometimes I like to do little... Uh, um, lessons within this part. And I want to give a little lesson on uh, ADX that um, I'm actually going to do a full lesson on this at some point, but let's just look at this. So first of all, we get the stock moving to the upside, ma making nice moves. And um, look at what happened to the ADX. ADX confirmed here. 
it confirmed here. Now it was lower, but it was still up around 50. And then we moved higher here and it was sort of losing steam. You can see that it was, you know, it was still above 25, but it was definitely losing a little bit. But look at what happened here. As we moved up to 250, this actually dropped down under 25 and then peaked below 25. That is a huge negative. So as this is climbing up here, the ADX is screaming at you that there's something wrong here. And so I've been kind of, I've been very uh, reluctant to, um, I've been bothered by this is I guess the best way to describe it. And then if we look at the RS, look at how the relative strength line is at a, at a low that's a two or three year low, even though the price has been moving higher. I mean, these are signs where momentum indicators like this can give you a leading edge. You can get kind of an early warning sign when you're watching these things. So uh, MACD doesn't really give you the same signal. So I think this ADX can really provide some help here. Now we're getting, I think, signs that things are breaking down. Um, we've had some issues with some other stocks like uh, MasterCard, even uh, PayPal has been breaking down. These are similar kind of patterns that are showing some signs of distribution. So I would avoid this for now. Make it stabilize at 200. This could take a while. So uh, just be aware of that. Let's look at, I got a request on a couple of airlines um, so I, I want to point this out. We make this move to the upside on the monthly chart and then come back. Now, the monthly 18 was declining. And then we just this year, this has started to turn to the upside. And notice how the stock stabilized right around that line. So I'm, I'm kind of encouraged by that. Okay, that, that, that helps me, f I feel a little bit better about what's going on. And then we can see that we got a little bit of overrun on the weekly um, MACD, but not all that much more downside. Um, the ADX had some strength based on the selling. So when I see this and I'm looking at this, I'm, the, fr the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, it looks like we're trying to bottom, but the sellers are a little too strong now. So I'm going to look for more strength to the upside. I'm going to want to see Green DI come into this and then buy the first pullback. I want to see Green DI break out here. Um, based on how much this overran and how much strength we saw in the ADX based on the selling. I don't think I would want to be early in this. I want to get a little bit more confirmation. Let's look at AAL, similar situation. The different, there's a, but, but there's a crucial difference here. So same idea on the monthly. We rallied up, pulled back, and held the 18-month line. But look at what the weekly did. So in this case, when we sold off, notice how the ADX did not get anywhere near, it didn't even get near 25. Forget about going above 25. Um, it didn't, it just didn't get anywhere near that level, stayed very low. So that tells me that the sellers on this decline are not as strong as they are in the JETS. So I'd be more inclined to be willing to be a little bit more aggressive if I wanted to play an airline stock, I'd probably be looking at AAL. Um, Lotus the zero line reversal. This is not overrunning the same way. So these are small differences that between the two stocks, and they're both in the same area. But it would lead me to believe, and when I'm evaluating stocks and trying to pick out which are one, which are the ones I'd rather do, this is how I would go about doing it. And so AAL would definitely be at the top of my list. Even when I've looked at all the other airlines, this would be at the top of the list. Now CCL fits more in line with me. Um, on uh, with jets. And um, part of the reason here is actually based on the monthly, not the weekly. So if I look at the monthly chart here, we have the same pattern, but it's a lot weaker. And I can see these two big red bars coming down uh, on this decline. And this is a much further, this is so much further away from the zero line, even though we've recovered, we're still in a very weak position on MACD. Um, so that based on that, it looks to me like this is just trying to do its best just to hold the 18 month line. It doesn't really look like it's bouncing off that line. It looks like it's just trying to survive here. So yeah, the selling wasn't all that strong based on the weekly, but I, I think based on what I'm seeing on the monthly, I'm just not as attracted to this. So I'm going to want to see a strong move through the, uh, the, uh, 40 week moving average and I want to see green DI kick in and then look to buy the first pullback. 
Uh, let's look at Amazon. So Amazon has been kind of in this range. And if we look at the weekly chart, we had this move going sideways. It tried to undercut and then it made a little move to the upside. Then it tried to break out and then it couldn't follow through. So really we're in a range where I think it's more like 3,600, something like that. And, um, and just because of what's happened recently, the support's probably more like 3,200. I originally thought it would be more like 3,000. Uh, but it has held this upper end in here and it's still holding the 18 month line. So you see how this pulled back now? We finally caught up with the 18 month and we've gotten a pretty good bounce off this. So <clears throat> I think if we can work our way through 3600 and get through this big red bar here, at least get through a greater portion of this bar, I think that would be kind of a constructive sign. Keep in mind that the MACD is still holding the zero line and we don't have any sign of real selling strength whatsoever. Red DI cannot get above 25. So um, I still think the bias is to the upside as long as we can hold above this 3200 area. So Caterpillar has, has done a strong move on the monthly and now we've pulled back to the 18 month line. Um, we've got a pretty good condition in place on the monthly. We're right in this area of this 200, this 200 level. Now, what the weekly is trying to do, in my opinion, is we've got an opposing trend. The 18 is below the 40 here and price was below both. So we had this condition in place where this trend is up and now this trend is basically down. And now what we're trying to do is turn things around. And so I don't think, I really just don't think this can get right through the 40 week on the first try. And the reason is, is what MACD did. Um, it was just too strong of a decline based on the MACD overrun. So I think this would be better served if it came back and tested a little bit and then turned back to the upside. So these are the kinds of things that I'm trying to evaluate. I don't think it would be negative at all if this came back and tested 200 again. I actually would prefer that before this turned back up. So that's what I'm looking for there. And even if it breaks through the 40, I would still wait for the first pullback in that situation just based on how this has played out. Let's look at NET, so Cloudflare. Flare. Uh, so um, I want to kind of focus in, uh, again, look at this big bar. We make a big move to the upside, and then the longest, the biggest green bar is after a pretty good run to the upside. So that tells me there's, it's a little exhausted. The momentum signs on this are really good. So it's not necessarily a get out and stay out, uh, get out of every position or every stock, you, uh, every share you hold. But maybe you want to take some profits here. And we can see the weekly chart had this big run to the upside. And then we got a couple of tails forming, or at least this one is finished. We still have a couple days left here. So kind of want to see how this plays out. But if we get another tail below 200, then I'm starting to think above 200 is resistance and we should work our way back down and consolidate. And this is a very volatile stock that has made a big move to the upside. So, you know, you get a little pullback in this and you really feel it. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. So, uh, yeah, I would be more inclined to be maybe trimming this and looking for a pullback. Uh, so this is kind of the problem with earnings. Look at what's taken place here. Stock had moved up and had pulled back on the monthly and started to move up. Nice opposing trend trigger down around 70. And we made a nice move up towards the prior high. And then look at what happened when earnings came out. Really violent move. So everything changes now, I think. Um, I think there's pretty decent support, probably around 60, and we've got pretty strong resistance, probably up around 85, 90, something like that. And I think we're caught in a range now, so uh, probably going to be a waste of time for a while. Just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, well, that's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining me. Send your stock requests to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.